Welcome back. You're watching the Gadgets and Gizmo show with me, Siddharth Sharma. Now, BlackBerry was one company that was marred by the Indian consumers just because of slow processing powers and obviously high prices on their devices. But now they've come out with a new smartphone in the Indian market and it is reasonably priced. And up next on the show, we get you a preview of the all new BlackBerry Z3. Here is a good news for all you BlackBerry fanboys and fangirls. BlackBerry launched this shiny new smartphone in India. Meet the BlackBerry Z3. Let's tell you what it's priced at. BlackBerry Z3 will be available at a price tag of Rs 15,990 and on pre-order you can book it now for about 1000 rupees less. BlackBerry Z3 has a 5-inch touchscreen display without a physical QWERTY keyboard. The display resolution is lower than what was seen on the BlackBerry Z10. The Z3 is powered by a dual-core 1.2 GHz CPU from Qualcomm backed by 1.5 GB of RAM. There is also 8 GB of onboard storage that is expandable up to 32 GB. For connectivity, you get NFC, GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and USB 2.0. At the back, you get a 5 megapixel camera with LED flash, and for selfie lovers, there is a 1.1 megapixel snapper at the front. BlackBerry has included a 2500 mAh battery with the Z3. At a price tag of Rs 15,990, the Z3 is the cheapest BB10 operating system device available in India right now. Now, smart gestures are something which are really cool on a smartphone. And handset makers in India are coming out with new devices just to cater to this niche audience. And recently, Panasonic also came out with its all new Panasonic P81. And up next on the show, we get you a review of that. This company has been known for keeping home school with their air conditioners. And then they made smartphones that heat up like these. Never mind, they are finding a new space with their latest smartphone offering. This is the Panasonic P81, a smartphone that promises to put Panasonic in the uppercut of great smartphones. Or maybe not. Panasonic P81 looks like any other smartphone that companies make. A black slab with some capacitive buttons, a huge screen up front, a plastic back panel at the back and Android hopping on your screen. It's not that great looking smartphone but is made well and means well. Keep noticing it for some time and the design sinks in. Panasonic has kept the bezel slim so that without stretching your hand too much you can use the entire screen. And at just 7.9 mm in thickness, it's easy to pocket as well. P81 also has a metal trim that runs on the side and gives the oomph factor. The display of the Panasonic P81 is a 5.5 inch HD IPS display. It's not a full HD display but offers pixel resolution of 1280 by 720 pixels. P81 is a dual SIM smartphone and trying to keep up with the processor wars, Panasonic loaded it with a 1.7 GHz octa-core MediaTek MT6592 processor with Mali 450 MP4 GPU and 1 GB of RAM. Yes, it performs decent enough considering that it has an octa-core processor at its heart, but then again, don't expect it to perform like the heavyweights of the smartphone world. There is also 8 GB of internal memory expandable up to 32 GB with a micro SD card. Panasonic has been advertising this smartphone a lot for its gesture play for opening apps. Well, it does perform on that front very well and that is one main USP of this smartphone. Apart from that, it's a regular Joe. Panasonic P81 features a 13 megapixel rear camera with LED flash capable of 1080p video recording and a 2 megapixel front facing camera for selfies. 
The images come out crisp and sharp, and the camera performance is something that was impressive on the Panasonic P81. This is one department where it does not disappoint at all, but like many other smartphones, the low light photography is just too grainy. Panasonic P81 features a 2500 mAh removable battery that is quite impressive and lasts you a day easily, even with heavy usage. In the battery department, the P81 is right on the money. For the price tag of Rs 22,000 on the box, Panasonic P81 isn't the best smartphone around in this price range. Gesture play sure is good. But when it comes to performance, looks and overall smartphone experience, it's just another pretty average option for you guys. App developers are very important for any operating system to thrive. And Google takes Android very seriously. Next up on the show, we get you all the highlights from recently held Google I.O. 2014. Google announced the Android One program at the Google I.O. 2014, which will be a turnkey program, helping manufacturers create high-quality Android phones easily. The surprise package is that Google is working with India's Micromax, Spice and Carbon for the first set of Android One devices. That is one great news for Indian smartphone manufacturers. Google also announced that the Micromax device would feature a 4.5-inch display, dual SIM capabilities, FM radio and micro SD card support and will just cost $100 that turns out to be about 6,000 rupees. These smartphones will run on stock version of Android just like Google's Nexus smartphone and Google Play Edition devices. It looks like that the days of feature phones are numbered now. Google also announced unlimited Google Drive for work that has a price tag of $10 per user per month. But well, there is one limitation. Individual files cannot exceed 5 terabyte. Also Google decided not to officially launch a new version of Android but to showcase the L named preview instead. This will give developers more time to bring their apps up to speed before Android L is released. And with that, it's time for us to say goodbye on this edition of Gadgets and Gizmos show. If you have any comments, queries or suggestions, tweet us at HSD Gizmos. You can also email us on hdg at artstuck.com. We'll see you same time, same place next week. But for all the news and updates, keep watching Headlines Today. Brought to you by Ansar University, spanning decades in education.